Are you looking to learn about what you can possibly get for Lego investments? In this video, we're going to focus a little bit more on cash flow, part of your Lego reselling business. Hi, this is Jeremy Stark here from Brick Finds and Flips at BrickFlips.com. Thanks for joining the show today. In today's show, we're going to focus a little bit more on kind of the, the financial aspects of having a reselling business involving Lego. Pretty much anything. This can be for anything that is considered a long-term hold. And usually a long-term hold is, is you know roughly defined at least six months or longer. Uh, it's not something, uh, Lego is, is definitely not something that I would recommend to uh, do a short term kind of, uh, you know, investment in it where you're just buying it and then selling it right away. Maybe there are some arbitrage opportunities. For the most part, Lego is, at least the Lego that I invest in, is, is mainly seen as an investment that takes over uh, six months to two years sometimes. Before we get started though, if you could please smash that like button down below. That way there, everybody knows that we're making great videos for you. Also, if you could hit the subscribe button down below, uh, I'd love to offer you guys a lot more Lego investing tips as well. Now that we've got that way, let's get right into it. As I really wanted to kind of focus today is more on just Lego investing overall. Um, this is not really specific to any particular sets or themes. I know that if you've watched my channel before, I do try to go dive into a little bit of themes and show you a little bit of historical things. Really today, it's more, we're going to be talking more about Lego kind of investment and why uh, you, what kind of Lego you want to particularly concentrate on. And then also some of the pitfalls and things that you really want to be considering when you're investing in Lego. Before I, I dive right into that, I just want to let you guys know, you know, if you want any of our promotions or anything, we have a giveaways that are always going on. So if you go to that link down below, there's our most recent giveaway. If you're watching this any other time, uh, we also do have uh, some retiring Lego sets. If you wanted to take a look at that, there's a spreadsheet for that as well. And then if you want to do some calculations, there's also a return on investment calculator that you can grab as well. What I focused on mainly is a lot of stuff that, that we're going to go over is just, you know, finding out when the best time to kind of hold on to Lego just by looking at some historical data as far as, and then the, the, the kind of the drawbacks of doing that. And the main thing that, that I really wanted to focus on is is really cash flow for your business. Because uh, if you've never run a reselling e-commerce business you know cash flow is really important to get more inventory and to keep the keep the everything going the machine running so to speak so a lot of people think they, they get into it yeah i'm gonna buy a few sets and you know i'm gonna sell it and it's gonna pay for my my hobby which is great you know if you want to be if you're one of those hobby uh, people that you want to just hold on to a couple sets and sell them later on then that's great but if you really want to up your game and you want to really make more of an investment, then you really have to take it like a business. You have to be concerned about the things that are going to keep your business running. And that is really cash coming in. You know, as I always say, it is basically cash flow. If you don't know, it's the money earned or spent from investments. So you're basically getting money in and then you're turning that around into another investment. And if you're doing Lego, then that's buying more Lego. So you have to have um, some sort of infusion of cash at the beginning. And, you know, there's different ways to do it. Lego is not always, I'm going to be honest with you, Lego is not the best way to get started into kind of cash flow. You know, there are other products that you can probably find that you can get a little bit more cash flow and then you basically going into it. I know a lot of you folks do BrickLink. That's really a good way to invest in it as well, where you can get some and you can you know, sell it for parts and things like that. Now, you know, have to hold on to it later if you get the sets really lower, uh, minifigures and things like that. So that's really a good way to, to you know, to kind of get some cash flowing into your business. Um, you can also do other, other products and everything as well. We're, if we're talking Lego, really, you know, Lego is definitely a long-term hold and it's something that you want to generally hold for about one to three years, sometimes a little bit less, maybe six months to a year. If you get some deals on some Lego, maybe clearance time and you want to let it go at that. But I'm going to show you what I, what I generally do is I hold on to mine for at least two years, sometimes a little bit longer, not always case. Sometimes I let it go before then, but I want to show you some of the numbers that 
that you can expect. And the biggest thing is, you know, as you're looking at all this stuff, you're going to notice a few little trends that seem to happen with it. So I know it's really, you have to you really need to wait a year or three years. You know, the generally the return on investment is about six to 12 months is about 100% to 125%. ROI. Now that's not every single Lego. So please, I'm sure you guys can find some that just, just didn't do that well. There's always going to be those instances of it. But if you do kind of the averages and you start looking at some of these older sets, you're going to notice that that's around the return on investment average. And obviously it depends on your buy costs as well. So if you're buying it at a, during a clearance period, then maybe you get a little bit more. If you're buying just the normal retail, then, or, you know, somewhat of a discount or, you know, maybe during Black Friday, then it, it could be different, you know, so that's not always the case. It's really dependent on your buy costs. But usually the averages are about 200 to 300% ROI for a longer hold than that. Generally, you know, somewhere from uh, two years on, a year and a half on, that's kind of the average of it. I mean, it could be more, it could be less. And as you scale this sort of business, like I have, you know, you're going to just look at your bottom line sheet and you're going to see those numbers pretty evident in there. And of course you go in and you can look at the detail of it and some will be lower and higher, but really that's kind of the average of everything. The biggest risk that I can tell you guys about any type of investment or you know especially with lego is that it's going to tie up your money you know like i said you know, we're, we're talking about cash flow here so um it's going to tie it up for six months to three years now that's gonna you're gonna you might miss some other opportunities if you have your cash parked away in a in, in lego and stored away it is some risk that you're going to maybe miss some other things that where you could get a better return on investment you know it's just one of those things that you know you have to look at everything as a whole so maybe lego like i said is a part of your strategy and then you have other things that are bringing in more cash for you and it's a little bit turning over one of the benefits you know of lego of course of lego investing is that there is only a limited supply it's not like lego is making every single set over and over and over again now they have a few of those sets of course there's going to be possibility of that you know for maybe some other sets that are available now and then they retire and then they come back kind of like brett Favre, you know retire and come back you know, it's like he just wants to make another run at it. Some of the other the risks that you can take is, you know, obviously storage requirements as your inventory grows. I have a storage facility, you know, as far as where I store all my stuff. So if you have to worry about storage, you might want to have that as a concern as well. Also marketplace issues where, you know, you could be gated down the road. There could be some compliance issues with Amazon. There's always something going on with Amazon. You know, it, just the, the whole marketplace itself could change things. And then also uh, collectors are really picky about conditions. So, you know, make sure that you're, you're actually storing it correctly. So it's one of those things you just have to make sure it's this, you know, pretty good condition, um, you know, and, and, you know, you can get some returns on things and that can kind of kill the profits as you scale up. You probably don't even notice that it's a very small percentage. Even when I was just starting out with it, I didn't get a lot of returns, so it really didn't, wasn't a huge thing. And of course the economy, the issues that we're having right now, as far as the store supply chain, the uh, economy's always going up and down, inflation, all that other stuff that, that normally happens for the economy. So th those are really the, the long-term uh, risk involved in. Really, the benefits really do outweigh the risks. You know, as far as the the return the return on investment is really high. And, and I'll show you some real examples. We're going to just dive into a few examples to show you. But there's some different return on investment, you know, that you'll get. But for, for the most part, it's pretty good. Now, the, be the best part is, you know, I know that you can take your investment and you can keep plowing it and going in and everything like that most investments i would say to do that where you know let's say you're just buying stocks and everything i would do that but you have to remember with an inventory business is that there's a lot of energy involved and i mean work of actually doing it so when you're reinvesting it say you take a shorter return on investment like 100 percent, you have to go out and physically get it or you have to do something to get it to come to you then you have to store it and you have to put it away somewhere so there's more work involved in that then you have to send it into some place or ship it out to somebody else so there's a lot of time and effort involved in all those pieces of actually getting the inventory and putting it out now obviously if you have a team and everything then you know there's operational costs with that as well there's an added t cost involved in doing that if you were to hold on to a little bit longer and you you know keep that same investment in there but just hold it for a little bit longer you're basically shorting that as well also the other thing is there's there's definitely less competition and that kind of has to do with price tanking as well as the sets do appreciate there's less 
supply of it and there's also less people selling it because there's different models to sell lego or any kind of inventory but that a lot of folks will they'll, you know they might be you know selling it they might buy a lot of them a, a huge quantity of it and they're selling it for a lower profit which is still a pretty good model but you have to sell more of it you know to get a good profit uh, but lego values they do hold really well over time you know there's obviously a peak to that you know you'll see maybe three years is kind of where it really levels off you know at that point the biggest benefit is your time you know you can't I mean, you can buy, you you have an unlimited, you don't have an unlimited time, but you can certainly save time by doing certain things, holding on to a little bit longer. As I said, you're, if you're not reinvesting it, you're, you're, you're actively doing something or if somebody's doing something that's going to cost you with that, you know, you can hire people out, you can do all those things. Uh, but if you're just starting out, you know, these are some of the things that you really need to consider as far as that. So let's look at a few real world examples in here. And we're going to go into our spreadsheet right here. So I just pulled a couple of these. These are just a few of these examples right here. But um, just so you can kind of see it. So this is where you would buy it. The cost would be what you would sell it for. And these are the profits that you get in the return on investment. So if you if you didn't sell so, sold it at that, you waited another year. This is the profit and, and ROI that you get. So really, I just looked at a few different sets in here. And this is something that I suggest you guys do as well. Go in here. And if you haven't seen my Keepa training, take a look above. There's a Keepa video to show you how to use Keepa. But this really shows you some of the historical data in here about the selling prices of it, as well as the competition, as well as, you know, how many sellers and the, the demand of it and everything like that. You can go ahead and see that. So really, you know, I just picked a couple of examples. I, I didn't want to go on too much about this, but I want you guys to just get the Get, kind of get the whole idea of, of how long you want to particularly hold on to something. You know, one of the sets I looked at is a uh, creator three in one set right here. And what I did was really, if we're looking at this particular set in here, kind of gave you guys a little bit of numbers right here. So if I bought this at $15, it's actually what I bought it at. And I did hold on to it for, for two years, but I looked at the historical numbers if I had looked at it and, and I didn't sell it, what I would get for it is about $44. So that's really a profit about $16.33, about 109% return on investment so that's still pretty good you know if i if that's really less than you know 11 months i mean that's that's what you can kind of sort of gauge uh for that maybe if i get this a little bit less you know a little bit more obviously would have been less we really depending on buy costs and things like that not all this is going to be bought at you know very low prices but this is kind of the numbers that you want to look at i held on to it until this day i actually sold it for roughly around 80 85 dollars and that's a 341 percent return on investment now i'm just holding on to it for another year and i'm basically capitalizing on it at that point with so two years out you know that particular amount of money now if i had taken this and i just reinvested this in something similar to that where in the same amount of time it would be uh, roughly you know 100 percent. so i'm basically doubling my money at that point I still would be, it would still be less than that. So let's say it would be just round off number $16. So that would be $32 as opposed to, you know, $50, $52. So as you can see that, you know, I'm making a little bit more on this and I'm also doing less work, which is really the, the, thing I want to drive home to you is that you're doing less work you have now obviously you have some risk you know say you know your your warehouse burns down or something obviously you're hopefully you have insurance for that stuff but uh you know obviously there's different things that are going to variables that are going to come up um, because you're storing a physical product but for the most part you're not doing much it's sitting in a box hopefully you have it in a box please don't put it on shelves put it in a box you know, keep it, keep it uh, safe from anything. It's really going to be doing nothing at that point. Now, if you do need some cash, you know, if your cash flow, if you do have some cash flow problems, you can certainly tap out and get somewhere maybe a little bit less than this. Or the timing of when you sell this also has some effect. You know, obviously Q4 is a good time to sell a lot of products if you can. If you need to do it after that or, you know, before that, then certainly you can get some more for that. The other one I looked at is the Captain Sparrow one. And this is uh, set 41593. You know, running through the numbers on this one, bought this one for 250 If I had 
sold it, you know, fairly, uh, you know, maybe six months down the road, I'd get 134% ROI. But if I held on to it, and this is when I actually sold it, I, you know, this is the two year mark, I got 576% return on investment on this particular one. If I had, like, again, in this same instance, if I had sold it, you know, very quickly, and got my money already out of it, and I reinvested the $3.35, and I maybe got it into another so if i doubled my money again so to speak it's still not good coming out because this is about you know maybe a, a third of this so it would take three years time for this to get to the same return on investment if i kept doubling my money but that's why you want to focus on getting lego sets that are close to the retirement um, as you guys all know with any well maybe you don't know you knew the channel but lego does only have they're only available for so long there's only so much time that they're available in the store they have a end of life period where they're basically they stop producing them now they like i said they could produce the same set you know down the road but for the most part there's they're they all pretty much follow the same suit you want to get the the sets that are just close to retirement because you want to shorten that window of time that I that we went over and the hold period that you have for it. You know, generally once it retires, I mean, you can see, you know, somewhere as 100% within six months. Maybe if you get some clearance items, it could be even less time than that. But most, for the most part, if you're buying it, you know, somewhat close to the retail it's it's generally about a year and you know obviously holding on to it for a little bit longer than that you can you know get somewhere in the 250 percent or more for some of the sets now obviously these are just you know we're looking at historical data so you know this is not always going to be indicative of the future if you had to cash out on things i strongly suggest to look at when it hits your your particular ROI that you want to get. It could be less than the time that I'm talking about, but that way there you have, you know, you do have some strategies as far as getting out early if you need to, to get some cash for your business. You know, like, as I said, you know, anything with retirement is those are the ways to go for that. So I do have a list of retired sets now, probably, you know, obviously the new year, or if you're watching this in older video, these are, this is the, what the site you want to go to. This will go right to the most recent retirement set that I do have, but it has all the links for all the, the stores, as well as some other information on there, the different sets that are um, retiring. So really, I hope this helped you guys out. I really wanted to just sit give you guys an idea about the cash flow because a lot of times you know most people don't know when to sell lego and kind of why you want to hold on to it for a little bit longer and obviously different sets are going to have different things it could be more popular sets it could be like a huge supply of it so that could change things that are valuable but when you're looking at everything as a whole and you average everything out those are those are kind of you know what you can expect is in those ranges that i've that I've shown you, at least for the past data that I've had, that I've looked at. And, you know, as we go along and you you do take this and you'll probably see the, or notice those trends as you go along as well. Um, I hope that's helped you out. If you could, please like this video. Also, uh, take a look at um, subscribing down below if you hit that button. That way they get notified of any new videos that we do have. And we do have a podcast, too, uh, where we just talk about different things. We might have some guests on as well. So take a look at our podcast as well. Well, hopefully you guys enjoy the show, and I'll see you on the next show.